Hello, and this is Oceanography Unit 11. We're going to talk about the coast, which is actually made up of beaches and shorelines. And we're going to talk about the processes that actually change it um, in terms of like this rocky shoreline found on the west coast of the United States or this beautiful barrier island coastline uh, found on the, western, or the uh, western part of the Atlantic or the eastern part of the United States, along with all these nice drowned river valleys. And you can see um, it should actually be a river here. Okay, so we're going to talk about coastal regions. Coastal regions are basically made out of shore, which is the area between low tide and the highest elevation affected by storm waves. And we have the coast, which is the shore to the farthest inland feature. So um, we have offshore, nearshore, shoreline to that point, and then we have the coast, which actually goes up there because this is a wave cut cliff, uh, which actually was affected by an ocean at some point. Um, the shore is actually made up of the back shore, which doesn't actually have it on this picture. Um, the back shore is actually this area right here, which is actually um, works with the wave cutting. So the waves actually, when we have a storm come through, and I'm saying actually enough here for all of us, when the waves come in, they will go up and they will go up to that distance and they'll actually cut into this uh, uh, cliff and tear the rock away. <clears throat> then we have the foreshore, which is the difference between low tide and high tide mark. Um, that can be differentiated between spring tide and eap tide and everywhere in between. Near shore, where we talk about um, the wave cut beach, so where the waves normally will go down. And remember, that's half the wavelength, so if these things are uh, 20 feet apart, this is 10 feet of water on, and that's usually where you get the sand put up and we'll talk about the difference between a winter and a summer beach at some point. And then we have offshore which is going to be basically from where the waves cut into the sand all the way off um, until you run into the ocean. Then we have the berm. The berm is the part where the waves actually will cut into the sand and give you terraces and give you surf zones and give you all kinds of things. From here you you can see where the water line is actually hitting it right now. It's the swash line. And you can also see marks where the spring tide, the highest high tide, would have come up uh, most of the time, most of the month. Um, it's going to be lower than that. And the lowest part's going to be underneath here and usually underwater at some point. Beaches are incredibly dynamic. Beach composition is going to be affected by a whole lot of things. The real uh, differentiation has to do with the, the fineness of the sand. If you have very, very fine sand, you're going to have a very low uh, sloped beach. If you have coarser sand, you can build up areas and you're going to have a steeper beach. Um, this can actually change summer sand to winter sand, um, all determined by storms and things, but it normally has to do with the energy that's in it as well as the background. If you <coughs> excuse me, if you have a lot of rocky material, you're going to have a coarser uh, beach sediment than if you have uh, like broken seashells and more broken rock material. Sand movement works by swash and backwash. Swash is when it's actually going into land and the backwash is when it's going back into the ocean. Normally storms are not perpendicular or parallel to shores. So wind comes in at an angle, most of the waves come in at an angle, and that usually means the swash is coming up at an angle. Gravity which pulls the water back is always the shortest route. If you take a look at this, um, not the best case because it should actually bend here a little bit, but you can see swashes and backwashes. Sediment moves up and down the beach. Could have swore there was a definition for Hmm. Please make sure that the swash is moving the water onto the beach and the backwash is back into the ocean. Sand movement, smaller low energy waves move sand face and actually take the sand and move it up onto the beach. That's the summertime beach. Larger, more energetic waves take the sand off and move it back into the water and store it. In, in the ocean and give you like sandbars. That's the wintertime beach. So the sand progression is sand during the summer beaches build up and during the winter they 
get moved down and that sand that you see missing right there is the same sand you see sitting off from this picture down to this picture it's the same sand you see here and summer with low energy waves will move that sand progressively back problem is is we want this kind of beach in the spring not late summer um, so we'll, we'll spend lots of money actually pulling this sand back up um, when if we just waited um, we would eventually get there but we never like to wait sand movement <clears throat> it's called longshore current as the waves come in even if they come in parallel to the beach as they come in they hit shallower water and they slow down and bend so you can see they're going fairly parallel to the beach they will actually move sand up in the swash and back in the backwash longshore current is a, a current that moves along the shore the sand is actually going to go up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down up at an angle and down straight up and down at an angle down straight I think I have an animation in here somewhere it's parallel to shore so shore is this way longshore current moves this direction even though it moves up and down increases in strength more wave energy the faster this is going to move steeper the beach the faster it's going to move uh, the greater the angle um, because of the higher waves or the more wave energy you also get rip currents where this the topography of the beach allows water to filter back through not so much here because it's higher sand in very localized areas and you can see sand being carried out it also is carried along the shore but if it's carrying sand out and water out it's also going to carry uh, people out as well and you do need to watch for that uh, and they do have warnings lifeguards will have warnings up there so this is going to be our last slide for this one. Swash brings it up at an angle, backwash back straight in. Longshore current remains um, is the way that sediments move along the coast. Um, normally on our coast it is a southward motion because primarily that's where the waves originate. They're coming from the north. And if you take a look at that red dot, it came up and it's at this location. Gravity is going to pull it straight down back into the water. And the next wave is going to bring it up, swash back wash back down and it migrates down the beach and that's the direction of longshore current water moves down that way sediment moves down that way and if you ever found yourself bouncing up and down on the waves and you start with your towel like in this location you'll find out that if you're not paying attention you'll bob up and down you will do the little circle we learned for waves um, forward in the crest and downward uh, in the trough you'll actually find yourself going up and down and up and down and up and down but if you look at the where you are in terms of where the towel was you'll have moved down the beach every time a wave moves you up it actually sets you down but it sets you a little bit down and again on in the United States it's in a southward direction so if you start in Virginia you could end up in North Carolina and South Carolina if you're not careful and that's where we're going to call it quits. Appreciate you stopping by. Thank you much. And that is Unit 11, Part 1, uh, Shores.